using porting assistant to first modernize the application gives you so many options for how you can then run the code in the cloud. And when it comes to moving that to Lambda, if we compare the code that we had in our order consumer in our Windows service and the code that we have in our Lambda function, you can see that actually it's basically the same code. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in a new series on modernizing your .NET applications to run using serverless compute. In this series, we're going to take a common set of .NET applications, things like Windows services, .NET web APIs, and look at how you can move them to modern .NET and then run them on AWS serverless technologies. In this first video, we're going to take a look at Windows services and specifically how you can take a Windows service that's currently using RabbitMQ. You've got a publisher publishing messages to the queue and you've got a service processing messages from that queue and how you can move that to use more cloud native AWS serverless technologies. Let's have a look at the application. We've got this simple console application that's using the top shelf NuGet package to run a console application like a service and our actual service itself is using mass transit to configure the connection to RabbitMQ and set up the receiver to receive place order commands from a queue within RabbitMQ. When the messages are received from RabbitMQ, these are place order commands. We're simply going to check the stock of products on the order. This is all this service is doing, taking messages from a queue and checking the stock of that queue. If we have a look at our publisher now, our publisher is much the same. Again, we're using mass transit to set up the message bus. And then we're just publishing a straightforward message that has a customer name of James Eastham and two products on this order, one that is in stock and one that is out of stock. So let's just see that in action now. If I flick over to my dot, my build folder, you see I've got my publisher service. Both of these services are using .NET Framework 4.7.2. So we've got that really tight coupling to the Windows operating system. My Windows service is now running locally and my publisher is running. If I publish a message here, I receive the message over here in my Windows service. What we're going to do with this Windows service now is we're going to take that and we're going to run that on AWS using more cloud native AWS services like the simple queue service and AWS Lambda. The first thing we're going to need to do with this application is run this using modern .NET, specifically .NET 6. Because of course, this is a .NET framework application. Currently, we cannot run this on Lambda. To do that, we're going to use the porting assistant for .NET. And this is an AWS completely free tool that allows you to easily assess and then port your legacy .NET applications. And to do that, I'm going to assess a new solution within my application. I'm going to actually find my folder, GitHub, servers modernization, legacy, and then we've got our solution file there. And that's all I need to do to set porting assistant off and running. And what Porting Assistant is going to do is it's going to look at both the NuGet references that I've got, but also the APIs I'm using within my .NET application to make sure that they are valid for modern .NET. So Porting Assistant has finished its analysis now. And if I go in and have a look, I can see that all of the NuGet packages I'm using currently are compatible. And I can see that some of the APIs I'm using in my application are incompatible. If I go in and have a look at my Windows service specifically, and I look at my APIs, and let's just order this by status, I can see that both Top Shell and Mass Transit are incompatible with my 6. Because I'm going to be moving this to AWS Lambda, both Top Shell and Mass Transit are less important. So the fact that these are incompatible doesn't necessarily mean that 
I can't modernize this .NET application. And I'm actually going to go ahead and modernize this. One of the other cool features of Porting Assistant is that I can literally hit the Port Solution button and I can specify a location where I want to output this ported application to. And if I press save there, Port Assistant is now going to go off and actually migrate my .NET Framework application to be .NET 6. This has successfully ported over now. You see, as well as getting the exact same folder structure, we also get these port solution result files. And this tells us exactly what happened as part of the porting. So we can see that packages got upgraded, what source version, what target versions, exactly what has happened. So we get that log of exactly what porting assistant has done. And what we've now got is some .NET 6 ready code. For example, if I just open up my Q processor app and actually have a look at the project file, you can see that this is now running .NET 6 and all of the relevant NuGet packages have been added to this application. Now, it's highly likely when you first port an application, if I try and now build this, that the application might not build first time. You see the build has failed there. And it's failed because if you remember importing assistant, mass transit doesn't actually, isn't actually compatible with Bonnet 6. So that has been dropped. But what I can do is if I go to manage my NuGet packages now, I can actually look at manually adding this mass transit dependency back in. So if I search for mass transit and I'm going to install that now, I'll let that install, and then I'm also going to install the RabbitMQ driver just so we can get this exact same application working both in a 6 and in .NET Core 3.1. Now, if I come back in here and rebuild my application, my console app will run. Oh, we need top shelf as well. So if I go back to my NuGet packages and just add top shelf. And if I re-add top shelf in there, accept that. And we now have top shelf as well. Another change I need to make at this point is just to update both of my executable applications to have an output type of executable so that I can actually run them. But let's see how this port has happened then. I'll start up my service that is running there and let's go up back to my terminal window now. Let's navigate to my serverless folder, to my publisher application, and let, let's do a .NET run against my publisher application. And let's see if this has actually ported successfully. Remember, all we've done is run the porting assistant here, re-added a couple of NuGet packages, and then we are just now executing these applications. That has now run. Let's try publishing a message. The message got published and it was received at the other side. Excellent. So we've now taken one step toward a more, toward a more modern .NET application because this opened up a whole range of different possibilities for how we can now run this application on AWS. This could be a perfectly acceptable place to stop on your modernization journey. You could take your Windows service application, and you could just pack this up as a container and maybe run this with Pruner or run this with the Elastic Container Service. And we'll look at some of these services as we come through the coming weeks. Actually, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this modernization one step further, and I'm going to get rid of that dependency on RabbitMQ, on mass transit, on packaging and managing containers. And I'm actually going to move this application logic to be within a Lambda function. And to get started with this, I'm going to initialize a new AWS SAM application. So if I come back to my terminal window, let's just clear this down. And I'll come back to the root of this generated code directory. And I'm going to run the SAM init command to actually start a new AWS SAM project. I want a quick start. Let's just use the hello world example. And we want this to be .NET 6. So we'll just go through the wizard here. We don't want tracing. We don't want application insights at the moment. And I'm going to call this message processor dot lambda. And this is now going to give me a brand new AWS SAM project 
that I can use to easily deploy serverless resources to AWS. If you aren't familiar with AWS SAM, there'll be a video appearing just above my head that will take you step by step through how to use AWS SAM with .NET 6. Created my project now, so I can come back to Visual Studio and I'm going to add an existing project to the solution. And that existing project is in GitHub, .NET Serverless Modernization, right down this path. And we've got a Lambda function right down at the bottom here. So now we've got our Lambda function and this is the standard Hello World example for AWS SAM. So I'm going to go through and delete an awful lot of the code in here. We're not using API Gateway with this function. So let's get rid of all of that. And we've got our base function here. Remember, we're going to replace RabbitMQ in this instance with Amazon SQS. So I'm going to add the AWS Lambda SQS events package. If I could get the right package name in here, there we are, Lambda SQS events. And this gives us strongly typed objects for sourcing our Lambda function with SQS. And the other thing I'm going to do is get rid of my API gateway events because we're not using API gateway in this scenario. Then I'm going to update the function code here to actually work with an SQS event. SQS event there. And this will come from our SQS events package. And this can be our SQS event. So now imagine we're getting these place order commands onto our SQS queue, and then we're pulling messages off the queue to be processed. Now the way messages, a batch of messages come into Lambda is as a collection. So if I look in my SQS event object, if I look for each message in SQS event dot records, this is now giving me my each individual message within the batch. And then what I can do is I can go off and look at my actual consumer, the actual code in my Windows service. And actually, I just want to grab all of this. This is exactly what I want to consume with my Lambda function. Let's grab that there and literally just copy and paste that over. And because we have already run the porting assistant, we know that this code is is ready to be run in .NET 6. So we can just copy and paste a lot of that code. Now, of course, in our Windows service, we're using mass transit. So we have this consume context and our place order command gets DC realized on our behalf. So all we need to change in here is we actually need to parse out our create order command message. So if I say create place order command, and then I'm going to do JSON serializer I want to deserialize that and I want to deserialize that to a place order command and I want to deserialize the actually body of my message so if I say message dot body will actually give me the body of my message I'm just going to add a reference to my shared library again that has also been ported to dot six let's just add a couple of these references up at the top so now instead of doing context.message, we just want to use our place order command. The same here. And then we've got our place order command ready to go. So the final part of this is the actual stock checker itself. So we in our Windows service, we're creating this stock checker as part of our constructor. And actually, we can do the exact same thing in Lambda. If I just copy over my constructor there, rename my constructor from order consumer to be function. And now I've got my stock checker, at the constructor level that's been initialized at the constructor level, and I can use that in my application. So this application code now is completely ready to run on SQS. Let's actually add our SAM template. Now, if I go back to my GitHub serverless modernization, we find the message processor.lambda and I actually want to add my template.yaml file just so we can have a look at my SAM template in the application itself. Now all of this is set up and ready to go. I'm just going to delete some of these values here and the thing we need to update is our actual event source and this message processor wants to be of type SQS and we want a place order queue.arn 
And the other thing we need to do is actually create our queue in this template. So if we go right back there and I create my SQS queue, call that place already, and let's get rid of all of them outputs. So now we've got a SAM template that's going to create an SQS queue, and it's then also going to create a Lambda function that is going to be sourced by that SQS queue itself. So let's actually go off and deploy that. Now, if I come back to my terminal window, I can run a SAM build command, and then I can run a SAM deploy to actually deploy that into AWS. We're in the wrong folder there. Let's get into the right place. And then we'll run a SAM build. The SAM build needs to run from the same folder as the template.yaml file. I'll come back in just a moment. One, this, once this is finished compiling and deploying. That has finished deploying now. And if we go and have a look in the console, we can see we've got one SQS queue and one Lambda function. Let's go and test this. One thing I have done while that was just deploying is I've updated the modernized publisher application to publish to SQS instead of to RabbitMQ. You're probably not going to be publishing messages from a console app, but by way of demonstration, this works really well. So let's go off to our publisher application. Now, if we go into qprocessor.publisher and I'll just run that in my local terminal. And what this is going to ask me for is an actual URL to publish to the SQS Q URL, and then it's going to go off and publish a message in the exact same way. So if I grab my URL from SQS here and paste that into my terminal window, and then yes, I want to publish a message. And now that's gone off and published a message successfully. Let's just send a few more just for arguments sake, and then we'll cancel that there. If I come back to my AWS console now and back to my list of queues, you can see there are actually no messages available in the queue and no messages in flight. Now you might initially think that's weird. We've just sent a whole bunch of messages, but actually Lambda's processed them that quickly. If we come back to my Lambda function now, and I go off and have a look at the logs for my Lambda function, see, we've got log messages in our CloudWatch log group. If we have a look at this log stream now, you can see we've got the same log messages that we had in our local Windows service. This is now all running in AWS Lambda. And we've now abstracted away a whole bunch of operational complexity, managing taking messages from a queue, managing that mass transit code, processing the messages. I'm not suggesting that moving from RabbitMQ to SQS will be a straightforward move for your organization, but I hope you can see that just using porting assistant to first modernize the application gives you so many options for how you can then run that code in the cloud. And when it comes to moving that to Lambda, if we compare the code that we had in our order consumer in our Windows service and the code that we have in our Lambda function, you can see that it's basically the same code. All we're doing in this case is iterating over the messages that come in from SQS because messages come into Lambda from SQS in batches and we're just manually deserializing that place order command. That code will be running in mass transit as well. It's just hidden away from you. The actual processing logic is exactly the same. We actually could have kept this exact same order consumer class and just called this consume method from within Lambda function if we so wanted to. I hope that's demonstrated just how easy it is to first modernize your applications to .NET 6, identify the areas of your application that are going to need work using porting a system, run that porting and then take that and deploy that to AWS serverless cloud native solutions using AWS SAM. As always, if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments below, reach out on social media, like, subscribe if you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week for more .NET modernization fun. See you next time.